Welcome to numerical methods. We are still in our section on random number generation, but we now started talking about generating drawings of other distributions. So now let's explore a little bit the inversion of the distribution function method for generating sequences of drawings of a normal distributed random variable. So this is really maybe one of the most important applications. First remark that I already made is, well, we do not have an inverse of the distribution function analytically. We do not even have an analytic formula for the distribution function for the normal distribution. So for the normal distribution, I have a nice formula for the density. So my density is one divided by square root of two P exponential minus X squared half. The distribution function is the integral of the density, but an analytic formula for F inverse and F is not known. Well, I need this for numerical methods, so I need a computer implementation. So actually I do not need an analytic formula. What I need is I need a computer implementation that is accurate up to floating point precision. So if you have an implementation that is accurate up to floating point precision, it is actually indistinguishable in your computer implementation from the correct analytic approximation because we will have rounding to floating point numbers of the result anyway. And I have such an implementation. So for example, this one here provides an implementation of the inverse of the cumulative distribution function for the normal distribution up to machine precision. Yeah, So our relative error 10 to the minus 16. So I use this in my numerical experiment. So I have a coding session prepared for you. So let's have a small look in this implementation. So this is our lecture repository and the experiment I like to do with you is here in random number experiments, normal ICDF experiment. So in this experiment, I will plot histograms, so the density yeah, of the uniform and the transformed and the normal using different random number generator. For example, let me comment out a little bit the other experiments here and just run the one that uses mess and twister. So now if you run this program, we will generate these two nice plots. And this plot here, the normal via Mersenne Twister, via ICDF and Mersenne Twister, this uses Mersenne Twister as a generator, and it uses here this implementation of the inverse of the normal distribution. And if we look into this one, actually it uses the implementation that I have cited here. So let's step into this one. And this is the code. Yeah. So this is the inverse of the cumulative distribution function of the standard normal, yeah. the Java version of uh, this paper here. Yeah. And the accuracy is um, yeah, about a 10 to the minus 16, yeah, one part in 10 to the power of 16. So this accuracy is machine precision. Well, the code looks a little bit uh, ugly but um, at first, but here I just have a few coefficients. Okay, A, B, C, okay, D, E, and F. And if you look what he's doing, actually he's just approximating the function with a rational function. So this is just the ratio, here's the ratio of two polynomials, two polynomials having these coefficients. So with rational functions, you can create very nice, accurate approximations. And 
this is just the rational function. And then he just has a few decisions. Yeah, am I on the left-hand side? Am I on the right-hand side? So he has piecewise rational functions to approximate this function, the inverse of the normal distribution. So going back here to this remark, actually, I don't care that we don't have an analytic formula for F inverse. We have an analytic formula for F inverse, at least up to machine precision. The computer cannot distinguish the, the error. So I would like to use this one and our different random number generators to yeah, create normal distributed sequences. So you find this code here in normal ICDF experiments. Okay, and maybe just use the debugger to see what we, we are doing. Yeah? Okay, I set a breakpoint here. I run now the program in the debugger. Okay, maybe let's make these windows a little bit smaller here. Uh, for the debugger, this one is step into the function. This one is step over the function, or let's step into. So what I will do, I will call now plot density, uniform and normal via ICDF. I will use the Mersenne twister as the random number generator and the shown ICDF implementation using these rational functions. So you see this method is here above, which I'm well using. So step into, we'll first create the mess and twister, call the constructor, and then it will step into this function here. So now you see that I only use the interfaces. Yeah, The random number generator that is passed here is a random number generator 1D, and it's actually my mess and twister. The double unary operator, which is passed here. So if you open double unary operator, this is just a function that maps a floating point number to a floating point number. So this one that is passed here is the one that we have specified here. It's the inverse of the normal distribution function. So what we do is I create two lists, you know, two lists, one for the uniform numbers, one for the normal distributed numbers, and then I create the uniform one by calling my random number generator. So let's have a look here below. Here are the variables that we created. Step over, I create the first uniform. The first uniform is 0.24. I apply the ICDF function to that. 0.24 is below one half, yeah, so it will lie on the negative side of the normal distribution. So the normal one is minus 0 0.69. I add these two numbers now to my lists. Yeah? So you see, now I have stored this here in my list. And I repeat this now and create more and more normals. Yeah? So maybe this step again here. The uniform that I create is 0.52. Yeah? And this one is mapped to 0 0.07. Okay, so it's a little bit larger than 0 0.5. Yeah, so it's on the positive side of the normal distribution. It's 0 0.07. Okay, and I add this to my list. So step over after a few elements, you have here a list of uniforms. This is the list of uniforms and a list of transformed normals. Uh, then when I'm done here below, I just plot a density, yeah, a, a histogram. So actually this here is just how many little buckets you use in plotting the histogram. Uh, I plot this for my uniform distribution and my normal distribution. So I continue to run and he creates these two plots. Yeah? And we see the method works really nicely. This Zigzag here is because we have a pseudo-random number generator, so it's not completely evenly distributed. And you see that this zigzag will be copied over to the transformed sequence. Yeah, this zigzag here, yeah, 
is maybe, which is here around zero, is here around 0 0.5. Yeah? So this is the zigzag there. Okay, so I have this experiment also for passing in another random number generator. So for example, here I use now the same thing, but instead of passing Mears and Twister, I pass the Funda corporate sequence. I don't need to explain the code again because it's the same code here. He will just get the random number generator 1D that provides here the sequence, but now he's providing a Funda corporate sequence. So I can also use this code with a Funda corporate sequence. So let's also run it with a Funda corporate sequence. Yeah, and now the results look like that. And you see that this method also works very nice yeah, for a quasi-random number method, random number sequence for a low discrepancy sequence. Left side, the uniform distributed sequence, yeah, uniform, the quasi-random number sequence from the corporate sequence, and right side, the transformed to a normal distributed sequence. Okay, so I also have it with other guys here with the Java util random or the Sobol random numbers. Well, this looks just uh, the same. So first part of the coding session, plot a histogram for Java util random, as in Twister, the Funda corporate sequence. Yeah, this we did. Now I would like to investigate a little bit what happens to the limit cases u equals zero or u equal one. So what would happen if the random number generator generates a zero or a one? And for this, I do a little bit of a round trip. So my round trip is First, generate the u, then apply the inverse of the distribution function. So this is now here a capital phi, yeah, because it is the normal distribution. Then apply the distribution function again and check if you get back the u. And also maybe check all intermediate values. So I have this code here, yeah, test ICDF implementations and Maybe I just run the debugger again. So let's have a breakpoint here, run the debugger. And we step through the implementation using the debugger. Okay, so first debug step, step into this implementation. And you see, I will now check different values of my U. Yeah? So here is actually the P. Um, I will start with U equals zero. So P equals zero. P for probability, and I will jump into this function here, test ICDF implementations. So in this function, I will do now the test for two different ICDF implementations. The first one that I will use is the Apache common math implementation of the inverse cumulative probability distribution of the normal distribution. So this is here the first one. This I will test then here. And then I will use the other implementation, the one that I have shown you with the rational functions, yeah, which is actually implemented in FinMatLib. So this I will test here. So let's first use the Apache common mass. So I define the ICDF to be used, the Apache common mass ICDF, and also the distribution function to use the Apache common mass distribution function. I print a small headline. I'm testing now the value u equals uh, zero. Okay, so this is the one I'm testing. And I jump into this function. This function now performs a test using this inverse, this distribution function with this value, you know, with the value zero. And here is how my test looks like. So first, let's print the value that we have. The uniform u is zero. 
Now apply the inverse of the distribution function to zero. So what is the inverse of the distribution function for the normal distribution applied to zero? Okay, that is minus infinity. Okay. So now apply the f again to minus infinity. I get back zero. So this looks reasonable, yeah? So mathematically, it looks right. But the problem is that I get an x that is minus infinity. So if you would now use this, for example, in a black schultz model, the black schultz model was, was here. So you generate now the x with a plus or minus infinity. So here with a minus infinity. You would put it into an exponential function to generate the value of the stock. So the minus infinity is maybe not a problem. The minus infinity applied to an exponential function would get me just a zero. So the value of the stock is zero. That's maybe okay. Applying it to exponential minus x would map it to plus infinity. So maybe I don't like having these values here. Yeah, uh, Maybe I don't like that this function maps to minus infinity. Okay, so that was the test using the Apache common math implementation of the inverse of the distribution function. So now let's run the test for this other function. So I step into here now with this inverse of the distribution function here changed to this other implementation. So now I step into here, it's the same test. The uniform that we have is zero. So now I apply the inverse of the distribution function and it is mapped to zero. So he does not map it to minus infinity. Clearly this is mathematically wrong. Yeah, One half is mapped to the center point, the zero. If you map back, you will get to one half. Yeah? So distribution function, f applied to zero is one half. So exponential function would be one, yeah, which is not a problematic value. So actually here, this round trip fails a little bit. Yeah? It's, it's wrong. So if you go, if you go now to my script, you have this exercise, yeah? check the round trip. And what we see is that the implementation, the other implementation is actually not mapping zero to minus infinity. It's mapping zero to zero. And that looks like a strange behavior. But actually as a programmer, yeah, or also as a practitioner working on numerical methods, I like this behavior because he is avoiding the problematic value minus infinity. And how is he avoiding this? Well, zero and one are completely rare events. Yeah? Actually, in a normal random number generator, one doesn't even appear. Yeah? It's only maybe the zero. So zero and one are maybe limit cases that are very rare. And I just map them to the value that occurs the most often, namely the zero. It's the highest probability to be around zero. So that is maybe the least harmful way to get rid of the plus and minus infinity. So now let's check the other values that are depicted here. I would like to check maybe what is happening to one half, the center point, and also recall how my floating point double random number generator works. So let's go back to this section. So we had this little lemma here, how you should choose the M in a random number generator to generate uniforms that do not have a floating point rounding error. And this M is actually the two to the power of Q plus one. So this is the two to the power of 
So the smallest, the smallest non-zero random number that my uniform random number generator for floating point doubles generates is one divided by two to the power of 53. So after we have checked the zero, we should maybe also take a look at these values. So one divided by two to the power of 53, because it is the next value, next smallest value that the random number generator will generate. Okay, so the next values which I would like to check are double min value. So actually this is even smaller than two to the power of minus 53, yeah. So the smallest floating point number he can represent. But then I would also like to check the two to the power of minus 53 and the one minus two to the power of minus 53 and also the right point. So let's first have a look at this guy here. Yeah, so what is happening here? So again, first test with Apache Common Math. I step into here. My uniform is 10 to the minus 324. This is again mapped to minus infinity. When I do the round trip, the minus infinity is mapped back to zero, yeah? not to the original number. So you see that the round trip is not fulfilled for this number. Let's try this test now with the other implementation. I start with the uniform 10 to the minus 324. This is now mapped to X being minus 38. Okay. And it's mapped back to exactly the original U. So this guy is far more accurate. I mentioned it's accurate up to machine precision. It's far more accurate. So it is creating the correct X yeah, for this U. So you see that the other implementation is actually not so accurate co compared to this one. He is avoiding the minus infinity yeah, he's, he gives a different value for the minus infinity for a reason, but the other values are more accurate. Yeah. So now let's test the two to the power of minus 53. Yeah. So a number that the random number generator can generate. Uh, so step into that first, the Apache common math implementation. Okay, maybe I step now quickly over that. Okay, so he prints all the results. So Apache common mass input is a 10 to the minus 16. It's mapped to a minus eight. If I do the round trip, it's back mapped back to the 10 to the minus 16. Okay, that is correct. So if I use these two implementations with a random number generator, you will create the correct mapping for this value. The only difference is how he maps the zero, yeah? this one maps it to minus infinity, the other one maps it to zero. Okay, for the other implementation, we get the same result, yeah? 10 to the minus 16, mapped to minus 8.2, mapped back to 10 to the minus 16. Okay, that looks nice. So I have that here, this value is mapped correctly. You can also check the others, this one, this one, and that one. So let's continue with the program. Yeah, so just run the program and we see all the results here. So the 10 to the minus 16 works right. Yeah, the one minus two to the power of minus 53. Yeah, the other side also works correctly. Yeah, map to the x point 8.2. But the one shows again the difference. The one is mapped to plus infinity. Plus infinity is mapped back to one for the Apache con mass. But for the other implementation, one is mapped to zero. Zero is mapped to one half. Okay, so this implementation here is more accurate, but 
four numbers which do not occur in a random number generator. The striking thing is that it avoids the outcome of a plus or minus infinity. Okay, so that was our coding session. So we did also this round trip here. You find this again here in our repository and maybe you like to play a little bit with this. Next nice example for this inversion of the distribution function is the exponential distributed random variable. And we do this in the next session. That was it.